Hey, how's it going, Titans fans? Titan Uprising here. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Please continue to like, share, subscribe. My goal is to get to 500 subscribers. I'm almost to 300. So if you guys can make that happen, please do it. If you're tuning in for the first time, please continue or please subscribe, especially if you like the videos. Please like them and subscribe, share, comment. I comment on everything. Love the feedback. Uh, keep it coming, please. Today's video, we're going to get right into the offensive line. And guys, I'm a little worried. I can't, I'm going to have a positive towards the end of the video on what we have to look forward to and what some positives are, because there is, but the offensive line is just worrisome right now. There's a lot of question marks, uh, and I really do think that as of right now, this team will rise or fall because of the offensive line, um, and you could have made a case for that a while ago with the wide receivers, but... The receivers look like they're doing better. It was a better scheme. And then obviously adding DeAndre Hopkins is just, right. Adding DeAndre Hopkins to any team is just amazing. It instantly improves your wide receiver core. So uh, now the issue is the, uh, the offensive line. And mainly because of, well, what I'm going to get into here in a little bit is the guy we just released. But... Let's also get into the suspension of NPF for six games due to the uh, the gambling, right? Uh, but we'll dive into it. We'll get into it. Um, now, the guy that was suspended or the guy that was let go, obviously, is Jamarco Jones. Uh, and because of um, him being released, that just gives us more question marks. Like I said, uh, he was supposed to be that, that stopgap for us at right tackle. Now... Now we'll get into it a little bit. We don't know who it's going to be. And I will, towards the end of the video, I'll pull up the depth chart. And, you know, maybe a guy can climb up the depth chart and surprise us. I don't see it. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to pull up this this tweet here from uh, Ian Rappaport. And he tweeted this on Thursday, which is the day that um, we happened to let go of Jamarco Jones. And the tweet says here, uh, the Titans have released offensive tackle Jamarco Jones after he was tossed from practices for multiple fights including nearly sparking a brawl. One of the players he attempted to fight, Jeffrey Simmons. If I'm going to attempt to fight somebody, it ain't going to be Jeffrey Simmons. So that tells me the IQ level of freaking Jamarco Jones right there. But yeah, bad choice to try and pick a fight with that guy. Team captain, big guy. Uh, uh, no, not happening. Now, um, the brawl that almost started was because he blindsided Chance Campbell. Uh, the linebacker coming in year two that was hurt last year that I made a video on him. That's what almost started the brawl. And Aziz Al Shair got into it with him. And, you know, kind of a side note here, uh, I love Aziz Al Shair. He's been balling out. And this guy's sticking up for his team, so his fellow linebacker. Love it. Uh, they had to be separated and broken up. And um, I'm also, I'm not entirely sure if you guys remember this because I was, I was, Thinking and I'm like, is this the first time he's fought this this year? For some reason, I, I was like, no, it can't be. And I, I did some research and it wasn't. And I and then I once I read started reading about him, like, oh, okay, I remember it. Uh, so he got into it last year in camp in August. Also, he got into it with Taylor Lewan. So right, if you guys remember that, like I just did, I was like, man, I knew that. But he, then he got hurt. So um, now. Vrabel booted him, obviously, then, and then he booted him this year. And, uh, you know, so he did this shit last year. He did this shit this year. Vrabel's not putting up with it. He's sick of it. He got hurt, comes in, does it two days in a row. Vrabel's like, you're out of here. And uh, bye bye I like it. I'm okay with it. We don't want those characters on our team. They hurt us. They would cost penalties uh, and, try and, you know, stalls our offense. Yeah, I'm okay for it. There's no room for that bullshit on this team. Get it out of here. Uh, Vrabel looked pissed just in the interview when people were asking about him. I had a feeling. Not that he was going to cut him, but, man, I thought, is he going to fall out of favor here? Is he going to end up going with somebody else at right tackle? I didn't think he was going to get straight out cut, but, hey, he did. And uh, now we have Jamarco Jones. Thank you, J-Rob, for bringing him in. And that is one of his great, great additions, right, J-Rob? Man, what a... He'd even play a freaking single regular season snap for us. He was on the team for two years almost. This was going to his second year. I'm okay with it. Get him out of here. Does it suck that I hurt you offensive line? Yes. 
But having a guy like that in the locker room is a cancer. It affects everybody else. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we will have MPF back, so it's okay to lose him. He wasn't going to be on this team after this year, most likely either. Uh, it does free up a little bit about a million about a million dollars in cap space, and he's obviously a post June first cut, so it frees up a little more. Um, but good riddance. Now with MPF being suspended for six games, like I said, this just leaves us with more question marks. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jones was getting the first reps, first team reps at right tackle because MPF was going to be out. So. You know, that hurts us. Like I said, uh, glad, he, glad he is gone. You don't want that type of cancer in the locker room. But now Hubbard, the guy we just signed, is looking more or less like the option we're going to roll with right now. And uh, it might be okay. We don't know what we're going to get. Um, obviously, I think Jamarco, you know, might be, might have been the better option. But you guys also got to remember, Hubbard was brought in and we already knew what we had in um, Jamarco Jones. So maybe they didn't even like what they were seeing. And maybe he was getting pissed off and decided, hey, I'm going to start some fights because I suck. The offensive line up until he got released wasn't really getting the greatest re re reviews about it. So they were getting beat up. And our defensive front's nasty. So, but I will get into the good reviews in a little bit. There is saving that for the last. Saving up the cherry on top for last. And um, um, like I said, now Hubbard's getting the right tackle reps. Uh, Jalen Duncan and John Ojokwu have been in the mix as well. Uh, Duncan, obviously, is a sixth-round draft pick that we had this year. Uh, he's got a lot of upside. He's athletic. He's raw, right? Um, Ojokwu is an undrafted free agent. And Vrabel, by the way, has spoken very highly on Ojokwu. But Ojokwu did leave practice early today, and we don't know what is going on with him as of yet. So that sucks. Um Go figure, right? Guy, we ended up meeting him. Now he goes out hurt. Uh, probably should have pulled those guys off the field a little sooner when it was wet today. Personal opinion. I don't know. I'm also not a coach. So what do I know? But I think I would have just pulled him out. Uh, so the first six games, like I said, they're going to be a little rough for us on the offensive line. But like I said, there is some positive. There is some positive here. And I'm going to pop up, pop up a series of tweets here from Teron Davenport. If I can get it to load, apologize for that. So here we go. Um, I will read the oldest first and work my way up. Now he says, Peter Skaronsky just had a solid rep versus D'Amico Autry in one-on-ones. Good push to drive him back on what would have been a run play. Then follows that up. D'Amico Autry got Skaronsky back in their next rep using a jumping two-hand swipe to get by him. Continuing to go up from here, Aaron Brewer versus Tier Tart. Uh, took on the bull rush, dropped his anchor, and didn't give ground. Now, to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit, uh, it says dropped his anchor and didn't give up ground. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize, Brewer's a little bigger this year, and he's weighing in a little more this year as well. So, um, yeah, because remember, he's that athletic lineman that we've had for a while. Uh, and, you know, he was supposed to be taking over for Jones. Jones is a big boy. Uh, it looks like Brewer put on a little bit of weight. It might be okay in the inside with Brewer there. Give him a shot. Um, and then the last one here, a couple of good one-on-one -on -one reps from Andre Dillard. Got into his drop quickly and took on Arden Key's speed rush. Then he held his own on a bull rush from Denico Autry. So, we, so he handled um, Arden Key's speed and Denico Autry's strength and power, right? Um, and that's good because... Obviously, like I said, the offensive line is worrisome. I was worried about some of the stuff I was reading off the bat. Um, but now they're in pads now. And let's just be honest here, guys. Offensive linemen, you can almost call a holding on every play. They get up underneath you. They get up under those pads and grab you. And um, let's be honest. That's, it makes it a little bit easier if you can hold a pad a little bit and get away with a little bit of holding and get up underneath those shoulder pads, right? So um, you like seeing that from the offensive line. You like seeing that they're getting better. Remember, these guys are new, new scheme, uh, new everything. And uh, P, um, like I said, Skaronsky right there, you would like seeing that from the rookie. And he's inside, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna pull up the depth chart here for you guys. And if you guys, you guys should know by now, I use rlad.com. And if you've noticed something right here, Jamarco Jones is no longer on 
the team here. They updated this yesterday at 4.12 p.m. So, we have on this, as of right now, and, you know, I don't necessarily agree with how they have it, but, you know, the, no one really knows where our starting line is going to be, so they're just filling in. Um, Andre Dillard, left tackle. Peter Skaronski, left guard. Aaron Brewer, center. Jordan Ruse, right guard. And uh, Daniel Brunskill, right tackle. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they do that. I do agree with the left side there. I think the left side is pretty much locked. Um, I do think it's going to be Dillard, Skaronski, and then, you know, if you want to count the center as part of the part of the, the left side, you know, might as well say it's from center onward, the uh, Aaron Brewer, that's going to be locked as well. So we're really questioning what's going to go on on the right side, especially with Jamarco Jones, because Daniel Brunskill was supposed to be the guard, and then Jamarco Jones was supposed to be the right tackle until um, MPF comes back. Now, we have as backups Chris Hubbard, right, who they just got, uh, Xavier Newman, Corey Levin, Dylan Radins, and Jalen Duncan. You can see Dylan Radins is on pump, or sorry, not pump, the pup list right now. And then you can see third stringers there, Andrew Rupkich, Jimmy Murray, John Leglu, Zach Johnson. Don't see any of those third stringers making any noise there. Uh, so we're basically going to be focused on the first and second string, or so, first and second string guys right as of right now. Uh, like I said, Dylan Radins, uh, pup list, uh, MPF's not on here because he's suspended for six games. Now, uh, that basically narrows down the right side to Jordan Ruse, Daniel Brunskill, Chris Hubbard. Uh, I don't see Xavier Newman doing anything. Maybe Corey Levin and then Jalen Duncan, right? That's who we're going to have to figure out, the, the the two guys on the right side of the line. Um, I personally think Brunskill's going to be our guard still. Um, I don't think we're going to want to have him be right tackle. And then when MPF comes back, now we're going to mess with the whole right side. MPF's right tackle, and then Brunskill's right guard. I don't see that happening. So I think Brunskill's going to shift into the right guard spot there and where I think he should be in anyways. It's just weird how uh, our lads did this. And usually I'm a very big proponent for everything they do, but um, it's, just a, it's just a shift. Watch them be right. I mean, who knows? We're going to put the best five out there. Like I said, the left's locked, focusing on the right. I do think it'll be Brunskill as right guard. Right tackle, as of right now, and, and because we signed him, it's kind of looking like it's going to be Hubbard, um, Chris Hubbard there. I really do. I think it's, that's who it's going to be. I'm really excited for Jalen Duncan. I don't think he's ready yet. I think he's athletic, uh, got some talent, on uh, untapped raw potential there. I think he needs to be coached up, maybe get some fundamentals in him. And um, He has some, has some good reps, though. He has had some good reps. Um, I, that's what I think it's going to be, though. I think it's going to be Deanna Brunskill and then Chris Hubbard. Uh, with a chance for it to be Jalen Duncan. And that's for six games. I don't see uh, MPF coming back and not being our right tackle. I just don't see that happening. Uh, unless this line is lights out, which I don't think it will be. I mean, shit, prove me wrong. I hope you, I hope I am, but I don't see it being right side. Uh, we're probably going to have to have, you're probably going to see a lot of tight ends on the right side to chip because they're going to need that. And then we're going to probably put Dillard out there um, on his own unless we do two tight end sets and have them both chip. So <laughs> it sucks because I really wanted the left side to have that chip a little bit for Dillard, but now we're going to have to do it on the right with MPF having being out, being out for six games. Um, yeah, it hurts. It really does that that happen with Jamarco. But hey, like I said, we want him out of here. We don't want that type of negativity in the team. That And he's fighting with people, and he did it last year. He's doing it this year. He's not changing. It's who he is. Get him out of here. Cost the team in the long run. Need disciplined guys, you really do. Um, but hey, I want to know what you guys think down below. I want to know what you think about the right side of the line. Also, let me know: Are you a proponent for us letting Jamarco Jones go, or are you are you somebody that said, "Hey, I like the fire. Wish we would have kept him on the team. Uh, shouldn't have cut him because now we're screwed for six weeks, even though we were already." Um, let me know what you guys think down below, and then, like I said, especially let me know about the right side. Do you guys agree with this depth chart? Because I don't know if I really do. As far as having Jordan Ruse in there, you know, Jordan Ruse, it's a possibility. It really is. We're going to put the best five out there. It's going to be a competition and not heard too much on him, though. Um, but like I said, we're hearing good things from Dillard and Skaronsky right now. So left side, you know, it's, making, it's a little optimistic. Um, and then obviously Brewer at center. But now the right side's got more question marks surrounding guys. It really does. we got to figure this out at least for six weeks. And, you know, hopefully we can 
uh, have a good winning record after those six for, or first six weeks. Kamara getting suspended for the first game helps the Titans out a lot. He's suspended, suspended for three games, but obviously it's our first game we play the, the Saints. Um, I will be doing a breakdown um, closer to the, the season of a prediction there that I have for the, the whole season. Um, and I'll, I'll do that in a couple weeks here. But hey, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, what do you think of the offensive line? You worried? Are you not worried? Uh, comment. I comment back on everything. And hey, guys, we'll talk soon. Tighten up, everybody.